All right, everybody, welcome back to another podcast here. Last time we talked about the five different types of intelligence. Today, I want to dive into the five needs that associate with those intelligences. So in this podcast today, I'm going to talk about how we have different needs that often go unmet and they produce in us all these feelings of anxiety and I mean, honestly, things just feel off for lack of a better word. So without too much background on that, let's just dive in. So last time we talked about how there are essentially five intelligences, physical, intellectual, social, emotional, and spiritual. Today, I want to talk about how each one of those essentially how we feed each one. I mean, we, we look at the body, right? It's, it's very obvious what happens when we don't feed our body. It weakens and eventually dies. Other parts of us don't necessarily die, but become so dormant, they might as well be dead um, if they're neglected. And each one of these, they can be very closely linked up to the body. It's not just one thing either. It's kind of a different set of things that create a balance. You can be very, very healthy, but if you don't, if you refuse to exercise, you still will not, sorry, excuse me, you can eat very healthy, but if you refuse to exercise, you just don't quite have it. Um, You can eat healthy and have awesome nutrition, but if you are never outside breathing in fresh air, you're going to notice some big things. If you're never out in the sun and getting that vitamin D, you'll notice some big problems, right? So the body is a little more specific on its requirements, and it's a little more down to actual micro needs. The other elements are a little less so. And actually, the funny thing about it is it works in in reverse. The body has very specific needs, and they're all very detailed. And as we go down the list, they become more and more vague and less and less specific. And funny enough, the the neglect you put on each one of these is felt more slowly. Physical need is felt very, very quickly. Whereas spiritual need, you can go your whole life and not really notice until you finally tap into it that something was really missing. It's very common, actually. Um, a lot of people that have a spiritual awakening, for lack of a better word, often say it was like they, they discovered a hole they didn't know was there inside their heart. Um, there was, something was missing, but they, didn't, they were unaware that it even was missing. Um, so, yeah, as we go through this, it'll, it'll kind of make sense that way, especially when we think of it in context of the body and how we have these needs. So let's, let's just dive into the body, right? Um, as I've mentioned before, exercise is a huge one. Um, I'm a huge believer in daily rigorous exercise. I, I, I have family members and friends who have physical limitations and uh, chemical limitations in the sense that they're, you know, a, a close friend, his adrenals practically do not work at all. It makes it very difficult for him to have good uh, rigorous exercise. But I'm a huge believer that some type of exercise, if that means just walking for you every morning, that's fine. Nutrition is very important, and I <laughs> I could spend hours and hours and hours talking about nutrition. Um, my advice to you, though, is stick to the basics, try to avoid extremism, and do a lot of homework. But just know that you'll you'll learn one day that vegetables are bad for you, and then you'll learn the next day that they're good for you, depending on who you happen to. And I'm serious about that. Um, it's it's very it's kind of a funny world when you start studying nutrition because people say oh this thing will kill you, and yet every you know it doesn't right it, people get a little bit paranoid to think about nutrition sometimes. I'm a believer in just stick to the basics. Um, the basics are avoid anything chemical. Yeah, you can get by with it, but just stay away from it as much as you can because you're you're introducing elements that are going to be harder to cope with. Stick as close to to natural as you can, and I mean that in the sense of don't just eat vegetables, eat locally grown vegetables. Try to get back to the basics as much as possible. Um, avoid elaborate foods. Eat basic foods. Eat a lot of different kinds of foods. Don't just eat one type of food all the time. Um, the, the staple should be vegetables. Um, include lots of fats. Include a decent amount of protein. Don't, in other words, stick to it. Kind of take everyone out there that has all these extreme ideas and try to find the balance between all of them. You will not find anyone that's a health expert that recommends eating lots of sugar every day. So <laughs> there you have it, avoiding avoid eating excessive sugar. Um, and that alone, actually, for me is, um, going back to my experience, I'm, I'm fairly ADHD, which means that caffeine actually usually will slow me down. Um, sometimes I actually put me right to sleep if I drink a lot of caffeine. But sugar, in contrast, will totally light me up. 
Um, it's, it is, it's, I mean, it's pretty intense. If I'm on an empty stomach and I drink a, a really sugary drink, um, <laughs> it's, it's something I'll tell you, uh, you kind of have to experience it, but I, I get completely crazy. I just, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty funny. So I avoid doing that because often I crash really hard afterwards. Um, yeah, so you just stick for baseline nutrition. You just try to find the smart things. I have a friend who eats a really clean diet, really clean food, and every single day she would go into her freezer where she had bags of chocolate chip cookies that she baked, and she eats one chocolate chip cookie every single day. That to me was the most wise thing I've heard, and she's been doing that for years. She's like, yeah, because she's like, I can go off sugar and I can do all these crazy different extreme diets, but at the end of the day, I like chocolate chip cookies. I gave myself that one thing, I look forward to it every day. It's a fun thing at noon, right after lunch. I go and have my chocolate chip cookie. I sit out on the, out on on the patio and I read a book, and I love that. Cause like that that is a very sustainable, long term health goal. Um, very big believer in that. I do believe in cleanses. You know, um, when I go to a foreign country for a significant period of time, I try to cleanse out my system. I'm a believer in that, but avoid extreme diets that you're always shifting back and forth. Um, just try to stick to baseline nutrition. Um, get a lot of fresh air. Um, and this is one that might seem different to a lot of people. Um, go barefoot every now and again. Get in the sun every now and again. Um, there's a lot of things we don't understand about our bodies and what it needs. But as you continue to seek for more and more basic things, like just go back and realize that for the last several thousand years, we have, I mean, who knows how long, we've been barefoot. And then all of a sudden one day we're not and we don't ever touch the ground. And I'm starting to find studies now that it actually really deeply affects us. So. Just trying to go back and spend a lot of time outside, um, play in the mud, get dirty, that kind of stuff. I think that it's good for the soul, the mind, everything, and for reasons we probably don't know. Okay, so that's enough about the body, um, the physical needs. Intellectual needs. This is one I've seen as well. It's people kind of believe, I see so often people believe like, oh, I'm just not smart or I'm, I just wasn't given that gift. I'm like, I don't care. You have intellectual needs just the same. People say, I'm not good at memorizing. Okay, then memorize. It's, it's a muscle. I promise you, I, I actually, there was a point in my life I was memorizing every single day. Um, I memorized these just short quotes and, and things like that. I got to the point after doing this for a couple of months um, of daily memorization that I could look at a quote sometimes and just have it memorized. It was done. It was locked away. Um, some of them would be, you know, several sentences long and I could just read it once and it was there and perfect. And I found that as, you know, as you continue to stretch that, it really helps your, your mind. Um, this is one that's different as well. New ideas. The brain craves novelty, especially if you're like me. Um, ADHD does not function on, on um, uh, pain and, re and reward as much as it does on novelty. And I do think that a lot more of us than we realize actually have a huge need for that. We like to have new ideas. We need to think. We need to dream. Um, and that is a huge intellectual need that we have. Just dreaming, um, considering possibilities, thinking deeply about things getting lost in thought. Um, that is a massive intellectual need. And last, or uh, two more, is good books and lots of philosophy. You don't have to love philosophy, but get into it a little bit. Dabble in it and, and start to play with ideas and let them work around in your mind. You'll find that it really does add some balance to your life. Okay, so that's intellectual. Social. Um, this is probably pretty obvious to a lot of people. Um, it was not obvious to me growing up. I really didn't believe that social made a difference for me. I'm an extrovert who believed he was an introvert. And as you can imagine, it really left me imbalanced. But I kept on thinking, oh, you know, well, it's, it means I need to, I need to pray more. <laughs> right? Often we, we, we misdiagnose. We think that um, when something's wrong or something's imbalanced with our life, we, we look towards a familiar source of what to fix. You know, um, especially I, I was raised in a very devout home very strong Christian devout home. And that was always kind of the, the unspoken rule was that if something's wrong, you just need to pray more or read the scriptures more. Um, I have since found that to not be the case for me at, at all. Um, in fact, I believe in some ways we almost, it's, it's deceitful because we think that should fix the problem. Now, I'm a big believer that you can tap into divine knowledge and sometimes that divine knowledge says, hey, um, I heard once a great quote that a man was praying and said, what do I do? I've got all these big problems. I don't know what to do. And he was stressed out and he was frustrated. And a voice in his mind said, um, get up and clean your room. Um, and I just was so fascinated by that. I was like, that is exactly, that's exactly what I can see. So 
Um, not in a way to downplay the power of spiritual um, spirituality, but often we think that just praying more will solve everything, and often it does not. You need to really look at all of your needs and balance those out. Um, okay, so social. Number one, romance. We need it. It's a big part of what makes us tick. If you think you don't, I don't think you're accurate in that. I think it's a huge part of what makes us tick. Um, and we need to continually foster that. If you're, if you're married, find a way to make your, your, your partner fall even, you know, married or in a relationship or, or essentially not single, make your partner fall deeper in love with you every day and make that a big part of, of your priorities. If you're single, obviously get out there. You might think I'm not in the mood to get married. I'm not in the mood to be in a relationship. Doesn't matter. Get out there. Put yourself out there. It's it's a need that you have, whether you feel like it or not. It does actually create balance in your life. Um, I say the word partying kind of loosely. That looks different for every for every person, but for me, I just like to have a crazy good time with my friends. It's a big part of what makes me feel connected. Um, I like to go out and do fun things. I like to go out and adventure. I like to. Um, I love to be with people. Um, deep connection. Everyone has a different way that they show this and how they do this. But for me, I love long, long conversations. Um, some people, I mean, so for me, I'm a, I'm a highly verbal person and I'm a highly physical person. So I like physical connection. I like giving hugs. I like holding hands. Like I'm, I'm all about that. And it really does affect me in a very big way. Um, service is another big one. And kindness. I believe these are the social needs, and I'm sure there's more, um, but these are the ones that I've noticed in my life that are very important. Um, emotional, we have, these These are some of what I think are the emotional needs. Some of these might be a little surprising to you, but um, actually, let me pause really quick before going to this. What each of these needs are is connection. At the end of the day, it's only connection. What is physical connection? Connection with the body. That's what we're connecting with. What is intellectual connection? Connection with the mind. Social connection, connection with society. Emotional connection is connection with essentially self, um, the soul. It's it's who you are. Um, and so that's what we're really trying to connect with here. And that, for me, I mean, of course, spiritual connection is connection with the divine. Um, things that are higher than you, higher laws, higher ideas, principles, God, um, the universe, energy, whatever you want to call it, all of the above, you're connecting with essentially the metaphysical. Um, so looking at the emotional connection, um, we have my, one of the big ones that I've, I've noticed is adventure. We need adventure. This, the, the soul needs that we need adventure and excitement and, um, and going along with that. The next one is risk. I think risk is a human need. Um, it's a big part of what makes us tick is we need to do things that scare us, we need to do things that have consequence, we need to do things that, um, I don't believe in putting yourself in unnecessary mortal peril constantly, but you should, I believe you should do things that are more or less dangerous. Um, because living a life of constant fear and shutting yourself inside, always afraid something bad's going to happen is no way to live. Um, that's something you have to decide for yourself, what is a reasonable amount of risk to take. But in everything you do, in business, in relationships, in um, ideas, in spirituality, in adventure, everything, there has to be a risk involved. Otherwise, you're stagnant and you're stuck. Do not, do not be afraid to take risks. Um, dig deeply um, and make it stick. So um, meditation is a big part for me of what creates that balance. It's, it's just taking time to be aware. Um, I'm a huge believer in awareness meditation. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Um, an app that I really love is Headspace. Um, lately, I've been using it. You know, I try to use it twice a day, morning and night, and I found it really has balanced out a lot of this need for just, just noticing things. Just stop looking at things as good or bad. Just being aware of your feelings, being aware, and being able to look from the perspective of self. That you separating the body from the soul, essentially, and saying. How's the body feeling today? And that you are the one watching. Again, you're the you're not just the protagonist in your story, you're the author. And stepping that author's role and looking at it objectively that way. Um, nature is huge. I mentioned that with social. I mean, it's great to be and, and physical. Nature crosses many different platforms. Um, 
but I think the emotional nature that I'm talking about is just time to listen, to be present, um, to for to, to realize how small you are. If if ever if ever I actually feel um, really bogged down, there's two things that I love to do. One of them is I love to go find a river that's really really, really cold. <laughs> I like to go um, plunge in it and just sit there for a while. And what it does is it kind of seems to break apart the, the connection between the, the body and the soul. Like they kind of seem to almost separate, <laughs> which really doesn't sound pleasant. But it for me, it is just magic. It really helps me find like a deep connection. You're probably thinking, man, this guy's crazy. Like, um, but that's just for me what I, what I like to do. Um, and then the next thing that I love to do in nature is I love to climb to the top of something very tall. Um, I love to summit all these different mountains. And there's something so beautiful about getting on the top of a mountain and looking down and realizing that you are nothing more than a speck on a planet. And that planet is nothing more than a speck in the solar system. And that solar system is nothing more than a speck in the galaxy and so on and so forth, right? That we are remarkably small. And something about that, which seems counterintuitive, it's really, it brings some kind of peace to us. Because often we, we really do believe that we are the center of the universe. And then we really step back and we go, wow, we are so pathetically far from the center of the universe. There, is a, there, are, there are galaxies out there that function totally without us even noticing, yet we are so caught up in our own problems, our own day-to-day, our own day-to-day stuff. And there's, a whole, there's just whole, there's whole galaxies out there. You know? And so you just think of it that way, and it really, it really changes your perspective. Um, planning is a huge one. Living in a clean environment. A huge emotional need that I think is very, very underutilized. You need to be in a clean environment. It does something to your emotions that is hard to explain. And even the act of cleaning does something to your emotions. Um, Challenge, I've mentioned this before, and this is one that I'm very passionate about, that you have to embrace challenge in life. Um, I'm a big believer in endurance sports. Um, I've started doing CrossFit lately. Um, I've, 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 I, you know, I do my cold water plunges pretty much. If it's hard, go for it. Um, if it's difficult, make it happen and do things that really, really push you. Um, now challenge might also fall into the physical category as well, but emotionally it's hard to explain what a long distance run will do to you emotionally until you've done it. So huge believer in that. And the last one, and this one is so, so, so important as well is creation. We are hardwired to create. You don't have to believe in God to, to see this, um, that we are addicted to video games, not because there's anything that cool about watching a, a fake character run around the screen, but we like the idea of leveling up. We like the idea of creating something. Minecraft I, has, has been this huge thing, right? And it's just pure creation space. Um, if you can, and I'm not a huge believer in video games. In fact, I'm, I think uh, they're pretty destructive, even though I actually love video games. Um, you can transmute that energy that you put into video games into life and it really will do something pretty powerful for you. So, um, different levels of creation. Um, I think business is a big one. I think ideas, projects, a few that are maybe less known, art. I believe everyone should be an artist in one way or another. Um, I believe it's an enormous emotional need. And for some people, for me, um, that's music as well. And I also, so I believe music and art are both separate emotional needs. Um, if you don't, have anything to do with music? You might say, I'm not musical. I encourage you to become musical. Uh, that might seem a little bit off base, but it's hard to explain what it does to you. If you don't want to sing, then just go take some basic vocal lessons and learn how to be musical. It, it, it's hard to explain what it does to you, but it, I think it is very important. Um, art is the same thing. I'm not great at this. I do a little bit of songwriting, and that's kind of my art, I guess, the way that I express my creativity. But I'm actually recently been getting into um, drawing and I'm, I'm hoping to get into watercolor and uh, and oil painting so again just trying to create that emotional balance and and to find joy in that so okay and lastly and this is where we'll wrap up is the spiritual this one is so vague and so different for each person that it's hard for me to even um, pin it down but this is just some things for me that are significant um, scripture and I pull from a very, very wide <laughs> variety. Um, a lot of them would not be considered scripture by a lot of people. I've got, I've got fiction books that are my scripture. 
I've got quotes that are my scripture. I've got religious canon that's my scripture from many different faiths. Um, all of that. Go to go to script that is very very real and write your own, write your own scripture. Um, nature again, it's a different kind of vibe, but going to nature looking for answers is a very powerful way to connect with your spirit um, and to connect with um, whatever is higher out there. Um, this one is very interesting. Stillness just being still meditation yes but not even meditation sometimes just stillness just sitting not thinking about anything um not trying to do anything just sitting for a significant amount of time um prayer in all different forms um i was raised in a home where we, where we prayed over the food um and that's great i think that's decent I'm a big believer in praying for a very, very long time um, for over very hard questions and seeking for deeper answers. Um, and how everyone prays is different. The way that I pray is very different than a lot of people that I know. Um, mine's very informal and very, very personal to me. And um, I, tr I pray out loud a lot. I pray quietly. I pray often, even just like in a sense of talking to myself, trying to connect. So um, those are the needs there. I hope that this is significant for you. I hope I would love to hear what other things you think fit into this list. You can message me on Instagram, um, um, or you can also drop it in the comments um, on whichever platform you're on. I would love to hear what your thoughts are on these. So until the next episode, we'll, we'll see you then.